These are JBL reference monitors under its 104 series but with a Bluetooth wireless capability. There are several reviews of this audio device much ahead of this video but here I would emphasize ease of use of these monitors. Join me until the end of the video and please subscribe as a sign of support to this channel. The monitors are composed of the main unit and a slave unit connected via a cable. The slave unit has no other features except it only has the speaker terminal at the back and the bass or low frequency port. The main unit has all the controls, I'll talk all of it later in the video. These monitors are branded as JBL Professional and are tuned by Harman. Each of the monitor has a quashial driver, a 4.5 inch woofer, and a 0.75 inch soft dome tweeter designed for full range fidelity. Each monitor is drive with 30 watts of power from a 60 watt Class D amplifier mounted inside the main unit. Why Class D amp? It is because Class D amplifiers can reach up to 90% peak efficiency or greater. It means if each channel has a rating of 30 watts, then the amplifier can reach up to at least 27 watts. So you're making most of its power without damaging the circuit. Although Class D amplifiers aren't quite as high fidelity compared to less efficient Class A amplifiers, Class D amplifiers are also a good alternative to powerful Class AB amplifiers because Class D amps produce less heat. As to the actual sound quality, Overall, it has the average lows and highs, but since this is a reference monitor, it is designed to reflect a full range sound. Whatever is the input would be the output sound quality. In fact, there's no fine tuning here. The JBL monitors don't have tone controls because its purpose is to reflect the real sound of your input source. The aim is to determine the real sound of the source. If it's good, then it's good. If it's bad, then it's bad. This gives you the chance to evaluate your audio production. So I'm going to discuss now the different parts of the GBL uh, 104 Bluetooth desktop reference monitors. So when it comes to the volume control, um, the volume control is graduated, meaning um, when you turn the knob, you can feel a click. I just don't know how much volume unit increment for each step. The next control is the selector button. It's not a rotary selector, but a push button. So from left is the Bluetooth connection. And you can see here the pilot light of the Bluetooth. Next is the auxiliary input. Then the third one is the RCA input. And the fourth one is the TRS input and the last is all meaning you can mix all audio sources i mentioned earlier here's a 5 mm input jack for the auxiliary the other input jacks are at the back the stereo rca and the two balance uh, trs jacks Simply we call it pawn jacks. The maximum input level for the unit is plus 6 dBV or voltage decibels or plus 20.3 dBU or decibel units. This means the JBL monitors can tolerate that high input voltage or signals from varied sources. The back of the main unit has also the speaker terminals which connect to the slave unit via this pair of uh, speaker cables. If you buy these monitors, you can't find much of this information I'm talking about in the accompanying manual. One of which hidden information is the Bluetooth pairing. All you have to do is uh, press the push button selector switch here until you hear a sound that prompts Bluetooth pairing. 
check your Bluetooth devices like your tablet and phone to enter into pairing mode. Anyway, pairing is a breeze. The 3.5 mm headphone jack here will automatically mute the monitors once you plug in the headphones. So I can hear the sound here on the headphone. As I've said in the beginning of this video, the JBL 104 desktop reference monitors are easy to use. I'm showing you how my various devices are connected to the monitors. So my other cell phone is connected by uh, Bluetooth. So I'm going to select the Bluetooth on the selector uh, button here. And I'll play music from my phone. Next, I'm going to select the auxiliary input. And this V8 sound card is connected via the auxiliary input. I'm going to play some stingers. <laughs> Basically, you can use the entire V8 on the GBL 104 reference monitors like the microphone uh, input here. Next, I'm going to select the RCA input and my tablet is connected by the RCA to the JBL monitors and I can play music from my tablet. The TRS inputs are used by my Yamaha MG10XU mixer. I can test the connection using the Shure MV7 uh, microphone. This is also connected to the mixer via the XLR uh, output. Let's try selecting the TRS. Hey, sound, test mic, test mic, test mic, test mic. <laughs> and finally, I'm selecting the all inputs. So all my source sources can be mixed by selecting the all uh, setting here. Uh, first, my uh, my Shure MV7 microphone is connected to the Yamaha uh, mixer via the TRS uh, input. You can hear that and I can play also my uh, YouTube channel uh, uh, I can play YouTube YouTube channel on the uh, tablet and I can also play sound from the tablet and at the same time I can also <laughs> play stingers from the V8 you see <laughs> so one go so it's easy to navigate between the uh, devices using the selector uh, button here The JBL 104 Bluetooth desktop reference monitors are the second most expensive of my audio system here. It's selling about 12,000 pesos online, but I got this at 8,000 during a sale on the Zada. The Shure MV7 podcast microphone is the most expensive of my audio devices. It's about 16K including this mini tripod. Again, I bought this with huge discount. Check my review about this microphone. The link is above. The cheapest of my audio system is the V8 sound card. Check my previous reviews of this V8 sound card. By the way, the Samsung Galaxy S6 was broken. I repaired it. Check my tutorial video how I restored this phone. 
the link is also found above. So all my devices here have its own story except the Yamaha MG10 XU mixer which I seldom use. I might come out and review it later. Dengan selamat, aku si Jun Tariman, Hi Tech Tabay!